I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All the Mods Volcano Block. Last episode, we ended up getting most of the industrial four going automated. Today, I want to use what we got set up and actually take a part of this, which is going to be a mob duplicator, and I want to put it into use because today we're going to be getting into IC2. That's right. You heard me correctly. Hopefully by the end of today, we can have UU Matter set up and automated. Now, why do I need a mob duplicator for this? Well, let me explain. Let me explain. The mob duplicator is going to help me make more villagers. Yes, because this new IC2 mod has villager integration, and there's a lot of useful things that we can get from these villagers. So before I even set up my first machine, I'm going to head over here and I'm going to nab a villager. And I don't think it matters what villager I nab because the mob duplicator does not make exact copies of these mobs. Uh, so let's go ahead and make a mob duplicator. So what is it called? It's not at mob, mob dupe. And yes, we're duping mobs, mobs. Um, so yeah, I need an advanced machine frame and I do have that now set up. It just requires pink slime and some netherite scrap in order to make that. So I can go ahead and get that requested and that should start its process and auto crafting over here in this uh, crazy looking setup that we have going. And look at that, it is already done. Uh, and then everything else we should have. So there is a mob duplicator. So what do I need to get this to run? Well, just some power, really. Um, but we are going to need a couple of other things in order for this to work. And that includes a mob crusher. And what this is going to do is this is going to produce uh, some experience that we're going to need to put inside this mob duplicator. Now for this, since I'm going to be using it just to simply duplicate, I have this now taking that essence and it's going into my duplicator. Now in here, I have this set to run on pulse. And that means we can use a button to pulse it. And this is going to uh, allow us to control how many mobs are escaping. Um, so if I put this in here, it's not going to run until I do this. Then it's going to do a single operation and it should spawn the villager right there. And now we have a villager duplicator. I know that's pretty darn cool. And I love this. Now, the cool part is we can do this with any mob. So we can use this to literally duplicate any mob we want. Now, of course, I had to make this a little bit cleaner. I just couldn't leave it like that. I, I'm sorry. I, I have to I have to get this looking nicer. So, of course, fluid transfer, similar to how we did it, of course, last episode and put that in the buffer. And now that should keep this essence always filled using buckets. Uh, to transfer it wirelessly. Now to look up what the villagers trade, which is what we're gonna be dealing with with IC2, is you can just take, for example, an electric circuit and you can click and see how to obtain one. And you'll see this villager trade section. What you can do is actually click on the villager trades here. And we can take a look at every villager that's in here in all of its trades and its workstation that it is going to need. And we notice that in here, we do have a barrel from IC2 that can be used to look like, uh, do some trading of different fluids for emeralds. And we have this that can do some trading for some metal scrap uh, and gunpowder uh, through this fella, which is a demo, a demolitionist. And then we have a nuclear guy, which uses the uh, the nuclear reactor. And uh, it looks like it just gives you a bunch of really cool things like heat vents and all kinds of stuff, uh, which could be really nice, especially that coolant. Uh, the coolant is, is pretty nice. Uh, and there's also dense copper and all that stuff. And then there's also this little fella here which uh, takes these electric circuits and can make advanced circuits from them uh, using five of them and then also trades machine blocks and electric uh, the electronic circuits in the first place, which is pretty darn cool. Even some compressed solar panels for a little bit and also complex circuits can be bought from this guy only for an iron furnace from it. Uh, and then there's also the pixel foam guy, which basically trades you more of the uh, the CF foam which is a decorative item, but it's also used in this pack as well, uh, including like a, a sprayer and even electric jet pack. And it looks like you can buy these awesome tools as well for just some emeralds at the uh, max tier. And of course, this is Villager Greg. Yeah, this is this is Greg. You know the Greg that I talked about? Yeah, this, this, it's this guy. Now, for a lot of these machines, it seems like refined iron is the number one thing that's used for all of them. Of course, we have some basic iron to get our iron furnace for that Villager. Uh, but the majority of things end up using, um, ref yeah, this refined iron. So I need to get this processed or get a automation going so we can go ahead and get some uh, requested. And then we need to start on our rubber wood saplings. Now, there's going to be a lot of processes that go on uh, in making my future self really happy. 
And uh, to make my future self happy, I think I should probably also dive a little bit into mystical agriculture and get myself going there as well. And the reason why I want to go with uh, a little bit of that is because, well, this process is pretty tedious, probably the most tedious process out of the entirety of IC2, I think, and that is the rubber sapling process. Uh, so we need a tree tap for this. Uh, it does look like they've made it a little bit easier. So that way we can make a tree tap and make a tree tap bucket, which we probably could automate with modular routers. So let's go ahead and grow one of these trees, right? Now on these trees, sometimes you will find yourself a little node, a little rubber node, this right here, this little rubber uh, tap. Uh, and what you would do is you would use your regular tree tap to tap it, but there's a tree tap in a bucket. So if we place this on here, what should happen is over time, this will start to fill up from that tap and we can right click this to ga gather the resin. You can see it just went in and we can right click that instead of the tap, because if we keep tapping the tap, it will eventually remove the tap, which is not a good idea. Bad, bad thing. And then it's gone, gone for good. Now, here's why eventually we probably will get into mystical and it's because of the rubber balls, right? This turns into a rubber ball and we can actually make rubber balls from rubber essence uh, and it's only a tier two, and uh, this could be set up and automated quite easily with uh, the ton the many resources we have. Considering we have so much essence, like I we can make insanium gear right now. It's it's a lot. You know what? It's been decided. I am getting into a little bit of mystical agriculture for this because I think that having this at least running while we work on more of the industrial or uh, as we work on more of the IC two stuff, uh, this is going to be the way to go. Now, I did a little bit of a test. I went ahead and set up the phytogenic uh, insulator. And what I did was I put the seed in and I was seeing how this actually was going to work. And it does work the way I was hoping it would. So it outputs the essence and also outputs the rubber as a seed. So what I was thinking to do to automate this within itself, we can actually use a double drawer. And we should be able to use the functionality of functional storage to do this. So how exactly am I gonna do this? Well, let me sort of explain. The double drawer should be able to house both the rubber seed and also the essence. Uh, and what we can do is we can lock the drawer and that will set a filter for both of these. Uh, now, one thing should not go in here. I don't think the rubber essence should be able to go in here. It shouldn't even allow me to place it in, as you can see right here. So that's also filtered, meaning that this now is completely filtered within itself. All we're gonna need is the back to allow the water in and this to be both split. <laughs> and yes, it does work. So we have the auto eject and auto uh, input and we just set this to allow for both of those to happen. And this should just constantly repeat and uh, it all happens within this two block space. So now this with our regular component here should make this go a little bit faster. And then of course, to make it go even faster, we need to add some augments. And uh, I, I did go ahead and get all of these set to auto craft. I just now need to get this speed going. And uh, this is where this happens right here, the linkage amplifier. This is for machines and it makes the machines go faster. And now with this, I think I will probably end up blinking. And then before I know it, we're gonna have this whole drawer filled with this uh, because this is going pretty fast with all of these upgrades in. So now that I have a little bit of rubber to work with, let's go ahead and get started with the IC2 stuff. Uh, now, getting to the mass shouldn't be too difficult. There's a lot of mods in here that should definitely help us in that regard. So there we go. We already have all of the rubber that we're ever going to need, which is, I think, like I said, one of the hardest parts about getting into this mod. Uh, but over here is sort of a list of things that we're going to sort of need until we eventually get to the mass fabricator. Now, inside the quest, it does give you a really nice walkthrough of all of these things. And we do get all kinds of stuff. Like we got some dark coffee, my favorite. We get some scrap boxes, which I think can house random items uh, and later on could, I th think, be used. Um, and that leads us into making some cables. Now, this does have a really nice guide, like as you can see right here, that talks about everything, taking a book and putting it through the machines and all of this. We have like a search and information, uh, even bookmarks. So if you're working on something very specific, you can bookmark it. Uh, pretty nice. So in the main page, we have access to all of our sections uh, for learning. And this mod definitely has a lot 
lot to learn. Uh, there's a lot to learn from. It's a, it's a pretty large mod and uh, kind of complicated. Let's let's be fair. It does get into some really nu advanced nuclear science stuff. Let's let's be very basic today and uh, we'll get into some of the basic requirements, right? That we're going to need to get into. And that is how to power these machines, uh, which is probably one of the most compli complicated parts of this. And right here, Voltage and U talks a little about this. Um, so basically LV tier is going to be 32 EU uh, and below. Uh, the NV tier, I believe, um, is when you start getting into the 128. I think this is how much it can support, by the way. So if you put more than 32 EU through a copper cable, it can burn up. And I think same goes for the MV. Uh, so if you're if you're familiar with um, industrial or sorry, uh, immersive engineering and how those cables work, it's very similar here. How those cables, though, they just won't work. In this case, the, the things can break. Things can break and blow up in this in this mod. So be very weary of this uh, getting into this. So that's the power section. Uh, and then we have power storage and how we can contain our power and stuff like that inside of a bat box. But as you can see, everything requires rubber so much rubber and i'm glad we got that at least automated easily uh and out of the way so we can focus on the bigger and better things and that is well all of the processing machines uh one being well the generator that to generate power we also need a wrench so that way and, and also an eu reader so we can see how much uh, power is running through things uh and also a wrench so we can pick the machines up uh, now, I don't know if uh, this is set up in the way where if you don't pick up the machines in the proper way, they'll break, but we'll have to see. So let's go ahead and just make, I don't know, several refined iron. We just need that all smelted up so we can use this in order to make some basic things like a machine frame. And we're also going to need a generator. Oh, also, we should probably make, uh, should probably make the EU reader, right? And this is where that electronic circuit's going to come into play. Um, I think the main thing, right, we were needing for the circuit for the villager was an iron furnace. So let's just go ahead and make an iron furnace. And let's get that new villager that we just picked up. Let's go get that guy put into a special place so we can access this villager at any time. You know what? We could probably set it up over here and use this guy over here. So let's give it a try. There we go. Now he's in. <laughs> Just putting him inside of a box, just storing this guy. And uh, eventually it should read this iron furnace. Uh, of course, it's nighttime. We have to kind of sleep. And then it should become a employed. I blinked for a moment, got so scared, thought this thing was going after me. No, it's uh, it's it's just an archer out in the middle of the uh, the lava pit. Uh, that, that was weird. It was a skeleton right in a bee. But here we go. We, this guy looks so cool. This guy's got the drip on, man. I love it. Uh, but we should be able to interact now. And look, wow, this is crazy good. Oh, man, because we can buy electronic circuits. And these things are not cheap. They do cost a lot of copper cables just to make one. And we just grabbed a whole handful. And machine blocks are super expensive. This guy's loaded, all right? We, you don't even realize how much this guy just traded me for. That's a lot of stuff. This is all iron, by the way. This is like an iron block that's smelted. What even? Uh, so now I just have to wait until his trades refresh. It is stuck at Apprentice. It is very weird on this guy, on these uh, these guys. It does appear like there's some sort of like weird delay thing that happens with the like trades. Yeah, notice it didn't even refresh the trades. That's so odd. So yeah, it's like definitely lagging behind because as you can see right here, this can now trade those circuits that it sells for advanced circuits. And that's just even more powerful. Uh, so the villagers in itself, man, what a way to take grind out of this situation. Because these cost lapis, lapis, redstone, and glowstone. I know we're producing infinite amounts of it, but still, we can just trade for them. And it's just, that's just a lot. Man, I need some coffee after thinking about all this. And yeah, it gives you some speed. <laughs> so by the way, these scrap boxes. Yeah, we can, we can go ahead and open them. And of course, they're going to be filled with with like scrap. But yeah, look at that. It had charcoal dust. So yeah, uh, just scrap boxes are kind of nice in that they can just generate a bunch of random material. And of course, I believe uh, scrap boxes can be made later on uh, in some other processes. But I digress. We need to move forward in this mod. And now that we have these awesome components, well, things just got a little bit easier for us because the compressor is one of the first machines 
that we need to make outside of a basic generator. And so I'm gonna place a compressor back here. And uh, without any upgrades, this thing is not super fast, but we should be able to supply power to it. So let's make some cables from IC2. Um, and I think we can use copper cables and let's make copper insulated cables, right? Those are gonna be probably the best things. So that way we don't get shocked because yes, you can be electrocuted from these things. Uh, and it does talk about that in here as well. Um, and of course, I think the last thing I needed was the e-reader, which is what I was going to make in the first place. And now we have an e-reader. I think by default, it doesn't really say anything, but you can see right here, it's uh, talking about the tick rate and stuff like that and the loss and gain. A lot of information that I may not use all that much, but yeah, let's make some power. So that's gonna be our generator. This is our first little thing that we need to produce. And let's see, it requires an iron furnace that we already made. I, I'm pretty sure one of these, uh, they look like they probably use about the same amount of resources. The more I look at it, it may not be, that may not be true because uh, this costs a bunch of iron and this also costs three iron. Whereas this recipe would only cost the amount of iron required for the machine block, which is the same amount of iron required for the iron furnace. So in reality, this is actually the cheaper recipe. Um, and so this is going to accept some coal. So uh, we should be able to just fuel this with coal for right now. Probably automate this as well with uh, a planet logistics. But there we go. So we put that in here and this is a charging port for charging things like batteries. Um, and then we should be able to take now some cables, insulated cables and hook them in. And now this has a charge, right? Uh, and this should all be able to support this. No problem whatsoever. Um, we can, we should be able to read this. There is no loss or gain or anything like that happening right now. And yeah, I think, uh, I think this is all fine. So, um, let's go ahead and start using the compressor because that's, what's going to eventually lead us through this progression, uh, using the compressor and getting ourselves to the MV tier of machines. And for this, we're going to need advanced alloy plates, which is going to be this mixed metal that we then put through the compressor and then also carbon plates. Uh, which we are going to need coal dust that I think we can get from many sources. Um, we don't even need to use IC2, but we can. Uh, all we need is a macerator, so might as well make a macerator. And then it also looks like a, a little bit of crafting and then another compressor. So I might want to make another compressor as well. Uh, and then we should be able to make advanced machine blocks, which is going to lead us eventually to the mass fab. Now let's talk about power because we don't have to use this power. We can actually use our current flux power, our, our uh, normal power, right? Instead of using full IC2 power. There are converters in here, the converter mod, the EU converter mod, that allows us to convert our power. So all we're going to need is to get ourselves an LV flux generator, which just requires the LV transformer, very cheap block to make. And all we gotta do is get ourselves uh, that, and then this can allow us to convert four FE into one EU and thus use our power as a generation source. So we don't have to worry about supplying this with a generator. So exactly how does this machine work? Well, I actually have no idea. Uh, I'm just going to have to figure it out. Um, so I'm assuming that these points right here are all outputs and this point right here is an, uh, an input that is red. Uh, so I think if I shift right click or if I right click, it can wrench this. Uh, and it doesn't look like uh, the braking mechanic is in here because otherwise this wrench would say there's like an 80% chance or what have you of things breaking. Um, so that's not the case. So that's pretty nice. So uh, what we should be able to do is place this, give it power from our network, and then this is converting that power over and storing it like a bat box. That is super cool and super useful. How much power are we using here though? So not too much, not too much power, which is really nice. And this is probably going at the max it can go at this current rate. Um, and so I think we can hook this together without any kind of bad things happening. So there we go. So outside of the regular generator, we can also use our current generator that we're uh, getting RF from to, to power all of our IC2 stuff. So by default, the macerator, well, it's going to be insanely slow at processing up this coal dust. Now I already have advanced alloys working uh, just in a compressor. It's just the mixed metal, super simple to make. I already have these all on AutoCraft using this recipe right here. 
uh, using fire charges. Fantastic recipe, by the way. I love that that thermal adds. Um, but over here, like I said, this right here is pretty slow. Now this is producing mechanism coal and that's what's required. So we can actually make that process way faster by using a crusher. Yeah, and we can just automate it in the same scenario we have right here. The same way we're doing this, well, we can do that for the crusher as well. So I can just simply make myself a pattern for this. And yes, this is going to go way faster than all of those processes will uh, will go. So uh, if I need, let's say, I don't know, we're going to need the compressed version of it. I might as well start the crafting process that's going to be involved in making uh, all of the later stuff, right? We need to make the carbon. So I can go ahead and start to request that. And then we can just simply request the final product and that will tell us exactly how much we're going to need of this. So this gets combined and then this right here gets turned into the carbon mesh. And then I think the carbon mesh then gets turned into the carbon plates. So after all of that, we just need to request the carbon mesh and we should be good, right? So let's do, I don't know, 32 of these for right now. And so this is going to process the coal so much faster uh, than the other method. Yeah, uh, we already have the infrastructure, so we might as well use it. Now, the way that you would normally speed up machines is you would do this right here. You would make overclockers and that would increase the energy usage and also the processing speed. But with the energy consumption, it will also cause you to need uh, more power. So you would eventually want a transformer upgrade so that way you can make it a higher tier and use MV power to power it. That way you can manage and keep up with the power demand that the machine's needing for the overclock. And of course these, well, they're not crazy expensive and you could probably go ahead and at least make the first tier as it just requires water. And uh, I believe, yeah, an IC2 water cell, that's usually how I end up crafting them is I will just take like, for example, this basic cell, uh, which is just 10, right? So we take a regular cell and I would just craft a bunch of them and then I would just fill these up with water. I think you can just right click them with water, for example, on like a sink. And you'll notice they work just like a bucket and but they stack. So these are pretty nice in that regard. And then you can just mass craft these upgrades pretty quickly or at least the coolant cells, right? Uh, and that's something that I would probably want to do. Now, I think we can get away with putting at least one upgrade inside of all of these machines before power starts going a little crazy, right? I, I bet at some point we're probably going to run out of power. Let's see. How many of these can I actually put in this machine? Because you'll notice this will start to dwindle. Uh, and we should also notice that our power will start to dwindle as well. Doesn't seem like any of that thing, those things are happening. So, shoot, let's go ahead and make more of these overclockers. Aha! So... Uh, after six upgrades, it's starting to cause a drain, a strain on this particular network. Uh, so only six upgrades, and I bet even that is really pushing it. And I almost wonder, can I also put six upgrades in this? So yes, as you can see, these cables can only hold so much. So you really have to balance the amount of upgrades you put in there, uh, at least on the basic tier. Uh, so I think three or four uh, on these compressors probably a good idea. We don't really need uh, any inside of the macerator just yet because we're using other means to do this process. Now for the next step, things that we can't get, of course, is this rare earth dust via our crusher. So we are going to need to crush things like stone, for example, to be able to get into the next step, which is going to be making magnets. And after we have magnets, well, there's only one thing left to do. And at that point, we should be able to craft ourselves the mass fabricator, which can produce UU matter. Oh, actually, instead of a crusher, it's actually the rare earth extractor that is needed for this. Um, so yes, it is uh, going to just simply be the same as the macerator, except for this can it take in andesite, uh, and we should be able to now, right, with IC2, be able to use our cables to hook into the back, and this should still take place uh, as the same network. We need to get this all compressed up, and then I also am going to make myself an electrolyzer, and the electrolyzer is going to use uh, these dead magnets right here that I'm going to make with the rare earth chunks that we can get from the rare earth dust. Hopefully it's not too confusing, but this is pretty much what we need for the end. Now, there are some materials that are better than others for producing this. Um, so we will see how many items that we'll need of each thing before we actually get the rare earth. So you can see right here, 16 uh, andesite makes one rare earth dust. 
five obsidian end up making one so it all depends on what you have and that, that you want to use um it does seem like obsidian might be one of the best things to use along with soul sand now getting into the next tier of power of course i'm going to need myself a uh, a converter and we're going to be converting uh the same way except this has the ability to output it as an mv power which is going to use some different cable uh, we're going to use gold insulated cables for these, and this is going to support this. And uh, we're also going to need ourselves a uh, an MFE, which is going to be the battery. This is how we're going to use and charge our magnets. Um, so the MFE just simply uses this stuff. And so we should be able to set up our power converter right here. Uh, I'm actually going to go one block back, I think. And uh, get this all set up in the same fashion that we have over here. Except this is going to get us into that last tier. So here we go. We'll go ahead and get this set up. This will transfer our power over. And this is going to use a little bit more power. As you can see, 512 is what this is taking. But this can output 128 EU. Which is more than enough to supply this. Um, now, this, as you can see, is filling up. And the way this electrolyzer works is we put it on top of here. It doesn't have to be on an output. Uh, but it needs this to be at least over half full. And then whenever it actually charges a magnet, or one of these dead magnets that we've been producing, um, it is going to use a fourth of this battery. So yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time to get these produced, but uh, shouldn't be too much of a hassle since we can just generate power like this. So now that it is almost full, let's go ahead and try it. Put it in there and oh, there it goes. So it must need to be like maybe 75% full, somewhere like that. It said mostly full, and uh, it does also say the higher the tier battery, I think the faster it goes, I, or maybe the larger the storage, I have no idea. It is very confusing, as it does, it's not crazy descriptive, you know, as most mods are. Uh, really, only the mod devs themselves know the true meaning of their mods. It is, uh, it is always in that, that fashion. So there we go. So we're going to be waiting on this for a little bit. This is the, the time sink. There's nothing I can do to speed this up, really. Uh, and I'm going to need four of these magnets fully charged. So here we go. I now have the magnets and the rest of it is just simply crafting, right? We need to get to this mass fabricator. So we are going to need an advanced circuit. And then we're also going to need these stabilized ingots here, silver, advanced machine blocks. And we are going to need two of these. And there we go. We now just need this, which is another very simple craft, especially since we have all of these resources. And a mass fabricator is now done. Now, this isn't the only part of the mass fabricator, but we do have it now set up. Um, and so this is now going to be high voltage. So we're going to be switching to uh, a different kind of power here. Uh, and I've already made up the power to get that transferred over. And so let's go ahead and I'm going to steal the point from this for right now. And I'm going to get this set up. So this is the high voltage. And then, of course, we are going to put our point on here to give that. And now this is drawing 2000 from here because this can produce 512. And then that power can be directly sent into a mass fabricator to just produce this. Now, you can make this go a little bit faster to produce UU matter by giving it scrap. So scrap can be generated by just feeding a recycler uh, some materials like cobble and stuff like that. And then you just need to funnel it into the mass fabricator to make it a lot more efficient. But once this does hit 100%, it will produce a UU matter. Now, it does appear that there's like different levels, which is kind of cool, of recyclers. So that way we don't end up in the mess that normally ends up happening. Uh, so where we end up like, uh, uh, for example, needing a ton of recyclers. Now, I think to automate these machines, I do need to set up the uh, the importers. And so I should be able to set this as a import for north uh, and then access the machine to put this upgrade in. And now this should accept cobblestone into it, as you can see right here. Otherwise, they don't actually accept. And I almost wonder, uh, this should also be able to import and we should be able to right click the import to the west and it should be able to pull from the hopper and it may even be able to pull and export from the machines themselves. Uh, doesn't seem like the mass fabricator though has the ability to do that. So maybe it just innately has the ability to accept it. We'll see. So let's see if we can have the export just work then. Uh, so let's put an export upgrade into the bottom of this. And let's see. Will this uh, automatically export? That is uh, that is a thing to be seen because we might just end up putting this directly on top of the mass fab. 
Uh, and then that should work once we give it some power. Will this automatically hop her in? That is the question. So I guess we should just give it some power, right? Um, so for this, we we need to use insulated iron cables to transfer the, the power over. These are the big boys. Oh, and uh, I don't know if this is too much power. I don't think so. I think that is fine because I was worried. This is a tier two. I think this is an MV machine, but it is doing it. And I cannot tell if this is accepting unless that was the noise that it just made. Oh, it is. So this is working. There we go. And it probably would also work if it was directly on top. Now, what this is going to do is each time it receives that scrap, it is going to help the efficiency of this machine. Uh, and of course, the scrap is pretty random on this. So keep that in mind. It is uh, it is a pretty random process. Now, they, this thing I went ahead and, and changed so that way uh, the scrap is being produced more effectively and ends up going in here. It gets pretty noisy. This is only at 27% speed. And so it's only going to get crazier from here. Now you can go into your options and go into your music and sound. And there's an IC2 section. And we can probably take the uh, the block value and turn it way down because that will get really annoying really fast. And there we go. Whew, that is so much better. And that is really, really pumping through that cobblestone. I even upgraded it to the golden tier and I may need to upgrade it even further. It does seem to be supporting it, but it is dwindling. So we'll see. This does have an internal buffer of a little bit. But man, this is this is really going fast now. And we're only at 30 something percent speed. Holy smokes. And it's really starting to push the amplification. And we do have our first UU matter. And so there we go. We have our first pink blob. And really, we're going to have to collect these. And uh, I think we might be able to hopper these out um, and uh, put them into like a, a drawer. Right, we can just put it into a single drawer for now. And this will be our first UU matter. Um, so let's just grab a hopper and we'll make this super simple, just like this. And this is our UU matter production. Well, for now. Now I was told that what I could do is actually do this instead. Uh, we could take the sequential fabricator. Now this is going to need power. So I am going to just simply use another point because I don't know, there's something about me just having a single thing on these machines and not running cables everywhere that I really like. Um, so I can just go ahead and power this and then we can take the scrap that this is generating and we'll create a recipe for this and we'll lock that recipe into scrap boxes. We'll input and then we'll output over here, auto input output. And apparently scrap boxes are more efficient, like five times more effective than just sending raw scrap in uh, from what wiki the wiki says. So definitely worth doing that. And we can put this in here just to make it craft even faster, but it already, it, we can already see the effects of this. This is significantly more efficient because the amplification is staying active. And look at that, we already have another UU matter because of that. So I know this was a little bit longer of an episode, but I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you would, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and definitely give this video a huge thumbs up. Because this is a huge part of this mod pack is actually getting this UU matter. And so now that we have a little bit automated and making, we'll be able to make more of it later on, uh, it is going to help in our progression towards the end game of this mod pack. Very, very important that we get this set up. And as you can see, it's not too, too bad to do it in this pack. Uh, you don't have to do too much. And honestly, that villager came in clutch. Also, what should we name that villager? He's a very helpful little fella. Anyways, guys, I thank you so much for uh, for watching, and I do appreciate it. And it is now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing support is going to go to Flopster. Thank you so much for your amazing support over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. And of course, guys, if you have any suggestions for things that I can do better in IC2, let me know, because I am a complete noob when it comes to IC2. I've barely touched that mod, and even in the past, well, I take that back. I have played with it a little bit in the past, but it's been a long time. It's been a long time. So anything I can do better, of course, let me know. And uh, we're going to have to figure out a way, hopefully together, uh, a way to make that stuff way faster. We're going to need a lot more of that little pink jelly stuff. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. Bye!